Today we're going to practice recording transactions. You may remember the accounting equation, and if you don't, go back and review the accounting equation of video. But here is the accounting equation remembered. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. This here, and equity can be broken down into the two pieces, equity that your owners gave you, and equity that you earned by selling for more than your costs. And retained earnings can be broken out into the three parts. The revenues, what you sold to customers. Expenses, resources that you used up in providing those services to customers. And then dividends. So these two here give you profit, income, or earnings. And dividends are the return of profit income or earnings to the owners. So dividends are not retained. So this is all the earnings less the earnings that were not retained. So now we're going to record transactions and show how it impacts the accounting equation. And remember the accounting equation must always stay in balance. So here is the grid that uh, breaks out some of the potential accounts that would go under assets, cash, AR is shortcut for accounts receivable. Those things that you've sold but haven't collected yet, what customers still owe you. Inventory, equipment, maybe other kinds of assets. And that's your total assets there. And then liabilities, accounts payable, what you owe vendors. Debt, so that could be loans or other things that you owe creditors. There may be other liabilities. And then equity, what is an equity? You've got your what the owners contributed. Revenues, less expenses, less dividends. So these two increase equity, these two decrease equity. So let's uh, record transactions in our accounting equation with some de extra detail uh, uh, showing which account actually made it move. So if an owner contributes $10,000 cash, cash is going up, assets are moving, and now we have a record of having received assets from owners. So equity went up and assets went up and our accounting equation is still in balance. Let's try another one. Let's buy 4,000 inventory on credit. On credit, that expression means that you're not paying for it now. If you were paying for it now, it would say buy 4,000 inventory for cash. And if it did that, we would see cash going down and inventory going up, but that's not what it says. It says buy inventory on credit, meaning that the vendor is willing to give us probably a month, 30 days, and we can pay at any time in the 30 days. So we have inventory and now we have a liability. We owe that vendor for the goods. So we have an obligation to pay, so we record that obligation here. Notice our accounting equation is still in balance. Assets went up and liabilities went up, no change to equity. Now, let's sell half of the inventory for 5,000. How much was the inventory? 4,000. So let's sell half of this for 5,000. So when we sell it, this inventory is going to go down. But what are the other pieces? So we're going to sell it for cash. We're going to be paid right away. So we're going to get the cash right away and inventory is going to go down. Now when inventory gets used up, in other words, the customer went off with it, we record an expense called cost of goods sold. It's kind of inventory expense, if you will, but it has a special name, cost of goods sold. So we would record the cost of what we sold. And then we would record that we sold something to a customer, which is revenue. We have a sale. So when we sell goods to customers, which is one of the favorite journal entries of all time, isn't it? Uh, there's four parts. We have to remove what we sold. We have to record that we have a sale, record that something got used up during the sale, and then record either accounts receivable if they didn't pay for it yet, or record cash if they did pay for it. Let's pay for that inventory purchase. Let's go back. Where did we buy that inventory? Here we go. So we bought inventory and we owe, right? So now later we're going to pay for that thing that we owe. So we're going to remove it from the obligation. We don't owe it anymore because we're writing them a check. And now cash is going to go down to pay for that inventory that we bought. 
Now, since workers worked during the period and we're going to pay a thousand dollars to those workers for their effort. So we're going to write a check and we're going to record that we used up labor, that we used up their time and uh, that would be salaries expense. So now let's create financial statements. So we've got a number of transactions, not too many. Let's create the financial statements from the activity that we've recorded. So the first thing that we're going to do is create the cash flow statement. And the only thing we need for the cash flow statement is the cash column. Because if it didn't change cash, it's not going to go on the cash flow statement. Because the cash flow statement shows all the changes in cash. And so what were the changes in cash? Well, we got 10000 from our owners. That's going to go down here in the financing section. We got 5000 from customers. That's going to go in the operating section. And we paid 2000 for inventory and 1000 for salaries. So we paid 3000 to employees and vendors. So the net operating inflow was 2000 We had another 12000 coming in from owners. So our cash change which was started zero and ended up at 12,000 what can be reported uh, on the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement has three sections operating, investing, and financing. There's only two things that go in financing. Transactions with owners, which getting cash from owners is certainly a transaction with owners, and uh, getting or repaying debt. Investing is where you buy or sell long-term assets or investments. None of that happened during this particular series of transactions. And the rest is operating the business, selling to customers and getting resources and using resources in order to serve those customers. So most of the bank activity is related to operations because that would make sense. So let's do the other two financial statements. Let's do the income statement and the balance sheet. So we're looking at the balance sheet here. And the balance sheet is the ending balance in your accounts. So here's the ending balance in cash. It would be reported under assets. The ending balance in accounts receivable, what customers owe you, would be reported under assets. $1,000 for the inventory, so we have a total of 16000 in assets. We have a liability to the vendors for the inventory we haven't paid for yet. We have 10000 that we received from our owners, and then we have Revenues, less expenses, less dividends since inception. Well, this is the first period that there's any activity, so the ending balance also happens to be this period's activity. And so we've got total assets and total liabilities and equity equaling. Our accounts are in balance. Balance sheet has to balance. Notice that the balance sheet is at a day and time. As soon as there's a new transaction, these balances will shift. On the cash flow statement, the cash flow is for a period what was the flow over the whole period. Not just what's ending cash, but what was the cash flow over the period. Whereas the balance sheet's just the ending balance on one day of the year, uh, like a snapshot, like you would take a photograph. Whereas the cash flow statement's a little bit more like a movie. What are all the things that happened during all of the transactions? Let's move on to the income statement now. Now the income statement, like the cash flow, is giving the story for the whole period, for over the entire series of events. Summarize all the events, not just the balance at the end, but all the events. So here are all the events. We had revenue, we had two sales, one for 5000 one for 3000 We uh, used up inventory and we had salaries expense. And notice that we record the sale whether it's been collected or not and we record the expenses whether they've been paid for or not because some of this inventory that we've sold we haven't paid for yet and some of this revenue we've sold to customers we haven't collected yet but we get to record because the transaction has occurred and the obligation exists both to pay us and for us to pay the vendors. So now you're ready to go work on your homework and uh, proceed further.